Hello and welcome to the Console Training Definitive MIDI Guide for Grand MA2. My name is Alex Hughes and today we have the final part of our recent three-part series on MIDI on MA2. In this video we're going to focus on other ways to use MIDI devices as well as using LED feedback for the MIDI devices. Today the system we're using is Grand MA on PC system running version 3.3.4, an Akai IPC Mini and Grand MA Tools version 1.5. Let's begin. So here we have the two pieces of software that we're going to be using today. On the left, we have Granime Tools version 1.5. We're currently running the trial version just so we can sort of uh, explain that all the functions in the software still work. We're obviously just time limited. Occasionally it just randomly disconnects. But for this example, it'll be perfectly fine. The first thing we need to do is we need to key in some information. Now we can log in as administrator admin, but I always like to create a secondary user. So we'll come across to MA for a second. We'll go into user profile setup and I've already created a user and user profile, but let's quickly delete them. So we're gonna create a user, we're gonna call them remote and we're gonna set the password of remote. And rather than having them log into a uh, different user profile, we're gonna have them log into our current one just so we can see everything that happens. Then we just need to make sure that in global settings, we've enabled remotes and we need to make sure that we have a session started via MA Network Control. So we'll create a session, noting the station IP, is uh, master IP, is 1.26. So now that's in, we can click connect, and we can see that we're connected to session 1. Now we need to configure the MIDI part, so we're going to click in the MIDI tab, and we're going to go add, we're going to call it APC, and we're going to define our input as APC Mini and our output device also as APC Mini. We don't have any motorized faders and now we just need to set up the mapping for the device. So if I go faders, so if I go fader, uh, mapping, we can go learn fader and then all we need to do is we just need to trigger the faders. So I'm doing them in order, just simply pushing them up one at a time. Until we've mapped them all. And then we're also going to do a row of buttons. So now if I click learn button at the top here, we can click along the first row of buttons. Now we can also enter this information at the top manually as required, but since we don't really need to here, because we can do the learn function, we don't need to. We also do have advanced button options where we can set custom feedback via hex codes to turn things on and off. I don't know the hex codes for the APC20, but if I did, here I could get some LED feedback to work within the program. Now that we've got that set up, we just now need to assign a functions so that the MA understands what it's dealing with. So we're going to start with the faders. We're going to click one. We're going to say executive fader and we're going to start with number one and we're going to click smart assign and we'll see that as we do all the faders, our playback number is going up to match the faders. Now we can do the buttons. And for the buttons, what we want to do is on button down, we want it to be an executor button, we want it to be a hold, and we're going to start with 101, and we're going to do a smarter sign there. Then for button 1 again, we're going to go back and on button up, we're also going to want to do an exec button, we're going to want it to be a release of 101, and now we can also do a smarter sign of that. So if we go through, we're going to make sure that all those numbers are going up, so here we have button down, executor button, we want it to be click. Oh, actually, we want it to be hold, my apologies. On button down, we want it to be hold. And we just make sure that that's two. And then we can go through and do the rest of them. For now, I'm just going to use button one and two and make sure that they're completely set up. sign. So we've got two buttons, 
which we've got hold that should be hold not click so the difference is if with click if we press the button and hold it down it's still going to release so we want it to be hold and release when we release the button now we can go close we can go connect so we've now connected to the APC now if we go back to MA we can connect noting that we are running the uh, trial version it may occasionally disconnect but it's going to tell us when it disconnects so now if we come across to here we can see that we've got two faders already in and if I push them up and down we can see that's fader 1 and that's fader 2 and if I push my buttons we've got a temp and I've also got a toggle so we can see that it automatically already works without us needing to really involve anything that's how you set up GMA tools let's move on to uh, doing a little bit of uh, MIDI on board of the console so when we come back we're going to be in MA and we're going to run through sort of a little way of setting MIDI up on the device that uh, would work with Bohm Classic or Bohm Pro or even RD Tools if you had a complicated setup but the way that RD Tools works is it sort of takes all the MIDI guesswork out and stops MIDI being anywhere part of the Grand MA setup it handles it all and it's just talking to it over a network protocol which means you get the full precision as possible as close as possible on faders and buttons when we return we're going to cover LED feedback welcome back so now I'm going to show you the ways that I set up in MA custom LED feedback so we've got two ways of doing it we've got an automated version and we've got a manual version so the first thing we need to do for both is we need to have our remote input set up. So we're going to go to setup, we're going to click on the little yellow circle, go options, and make sure our in and out device is set to the APC mini. If we're using Bohm, we'd set this to Bohm and we do the routing so that all our devices could talk through Bohm and we do all the routing there. Then we need to go into remote inputs and we need to start setting up some remote inputs. Since I'm just running it directly to the console, my faders won't work because we're not decoding them with anything. So we're just going to do our buttons for now. So I'm going to add a multiple remotes of three. We're going to set them all to, uh, to executors. And we're going to set the page to one. We're going to click the little information thing so we've got a little bit more space. And we're going to set them to be executor 101 through. That way, we'll have 101 through 103. Now we know they're coming in on channel 1, but we need to know what the notes are. So we're going to click on the little information thing again, and press our first button, which we can see here. And we can see that that's note 56. So we can type in note 56, and we'll check the second one. We imagine that it's going to be 57, but we know it's 57 now. So now if we go 56 through, we've got... 56, 57, 58. So our MIDI mapping is done for now. Now if we come back and we go in here, we can see that I've got a toggle set up and we can see that it's flashing on the MA, but it's not flashing in the, uh, in the software. Now the easiest way of getting LED feedback set up now is using a Lua script that I'll link to. And we download the Lua script and we just copy and paste it in here. And we make a couple of little changes to the script as per our device. So the first change I've made is our local velocity. We've got four different options. And this is what we're sending back. So I've set it to zero if there's nothing there. Then we can set five, which is going to be red. And then five for sequence off. And then one is going to be sequence on. The only other thing I've also changed personally is we come down through this Lua script and this isn't my Lua script, this is by someone on the MA Share forum called GLAD or GLAD. The only other thing I've changed is the script sleep. So by default it's set to essentially refresh every half second just make sure you're clicking save. So any changes that we make take about half a second for them to trigger which for most things is perfectly fine so now all we have to do is run the MIDI feedback script and it knows exactly what 
to send out to what? Because we've mapped the buttons. Be aware that anything you add after the script is running will not be working. For example, if I now go in and we go remote inputs, we see if I want to add another one, let's go 59, channel 1, exec 1, and we go 104. We can see that the third one isn't lit because we don't have anything there. But if we store something to it, we'll get a little status icon come on. But if we store to the fourth one, we won't get anything because the script doesn't know that that is there. The first thing the script does when it runs is it looks at our remote inputs and it checks and goes, okay, these are the ones that I'm dealing with. And it's constantly in the background checking the status of these executors. Now with that set up, I can click buttons and we can see that it changes. So it goes green because that's what I've set. And then if we use our toggle, we can see that it toggles on or off. A better example of how these work and a really good manual way of doing this is using the set note function. So if I type MIDI note one, which is the channel, and then the, uh, the note that we want to put it out on, for example, 57 with a space, then I can put the velocity in. And the velocity defines with this device what color we go. So if I say two, we'll see that we start getting it flashing in green. If I go one, it'll be static. These devices obviously react to different, uh, different MIDI notes and stuff. For example, the uh, uh, MIDI fighters have got a range of different things. The Launchpad Pro can do up to, I think, 16 different shades of colors and stuff. So it uses all the different ones to do it. But this one, we only have essentially three colors and six options in total. We've normally got it in the normal color and then we've got it in flashing. So it's up to us to choose what we want. So if we decided that instead, when we have it on and we want to run this MIDI feedback script, we want it to flash, what we can do is we can come down into our MIDI feedback script and we can change, remembering what I keyed it in as, number four. We can change sequence on, which is the last number, to be four. And we make sure we click save. And now if we, uh, we quickly change this note so it's not flashing, when we run this script, we'll see firstly all four lights turn on, but then when I toggle it, we can see that now it's using that new value. And that's how to change values. And this system works really well when you've only got one MIDI device or one group of items. Obviously because different devices take uh, different notes to trigger color, we wouldn't be able to use this system with let's say an APC40 and a MIDI fighter. It just wouldn't work. If we wanted to use this exact script, we'd need to involve BOM and we'd need to start translating back the information we receive on from MA. But the other way of doing it without involving Lua is we can do it actually in a sequence of two queues. So if we create a second queue for our third one, we can put our little MIDI note commands in here. So if I go MIDI note one dot and of course we're hard coding this which can be a pain let's go one dot that for when it's on and we'll copy it and we'll set this to two so in this example our first queue is technically off and our second queue is actually the object on now without involving any MIDI we should be able to trigger this and have the colors change I've keyed it into the wrong uh, number. That's why we've had that happen. So if we go 158, which is the note that we receive from the device, most devices just take the note at the velocity they want back on the same channel they're sending. Now if I click, we should be able to see Q1, we're sending it at one, and Q2, we're sending it at the other one. And if we look in our command feedback, we'll be able to see exactly that. So when we go with the queue, we can see that we're sending that MIDI note out. That's a simple way of doing it. Of course, there are ways of doing it in GMA tools, which is easier. 
and the new program that they're releasing very shortly, which is called Show Cockpit, will assist you with doing that a lot more and the integration will be a lot better. I'll add a link to the uh, GMA2 tools thing, the, uh, the Lua plugin that I've used and any other information I find. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully this uh, short series has proved beneficial to you all. If you have any comments, questions, feel free to uh, ask us on our Facebook page. If you're coming to ProLight and Sound in uh, 2018, uh, myself and also German Alex will be around. Uh, and I'm, I'm more than happy to catch up for a beer or six, being Australian. Uh, of course... I'd be rude if I didn't spruik our, uh, our Patreon that would allow you to have got this video a week early, amongst other videos. Uh, check all the links in the bottom of the description, and thanks for watching.